Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen. Hi, I'm Mike Zapsik from AMC's Comic Book Men. And you're watching AFK, the AFK show, our favorite show on the planet. One of. One of. One of. One of. So you're, you're, you're watching the right show. Keep watching and keep watching. And keep watching. And keep watching. Don't stop. So anyway, without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Jeremy Bollock. Got four microphones here. It's amazing. You, you can sit up there. You don't have to hold it. Oh, time. thank you. Thank you very much. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. It's so nice to see so many people. I've never been to Waco. But they certainly serve very good beer where we... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. The children here. That's about all there's here. So <laughs> it's quite all right. It's all right. No, but it's great to see so many people. It's filthy weather, but you're still here. So that's, that's a great bonus for me. All no, right, and for, sorry. The, for those of you that are uninitiated, this is Boba Fett. Uh, but you have played in a few other roles. Do you want to talk about those uh, a little bit? Yeah, I think, I mean, I grew up with sort of Doctor Who. I did a very, very... Oh, who? Yeah, Doctor Who. <laughs> um, no, way, way back, 1965, 66, where m most of you weren't born then, but uh, it was with William Hartnell and then with John Pertwee, the Time Warrior. And that was a great series to come, come up with. And then I found myself in a soap opera for four years... Uh, then this came up, the, the, the part of Boba Fett, and I, I was very lucky to get the part of Boba Fett. I just looked right, and I was cheap. <laughs> you, you actually appeared in an episode of Doctor Who, did you not? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's the two, two episodes, two, two stories, and um, the, the early Doctor Who was actually live, going out at half past five in the evening. And so you, you were far more nervous. You were saying, what do I see? What if I make, we make a mistake? Oh, and then it's too late. You're on. That's it. So. As opposed to playing a character like Boba Fett, as we were just speaking about, you, you don't speak. You're, you're in a costume, and the costume does the work, the mannerisms. Yeah. No, no it's interesting because the, the character of Boba Fett, all you have to do, and you can leave this room later on, and you can all pretend to be Boba Fett because this, if you stand still and occasionally glance at someone very slowly, it's far more menacing than running around with a gun, being, pretending to be cool. Um, I, I was given not many lines, I had no script, and I can remember when uh, we're taking Han Solo up into the carbon freezer, down into the slave one, and I had to say, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. <laughs> when they said, they said, thank you, Jeremy, that's marvellous, right? Right, stand by, we'll take it now. This is absolutely true, one of, one of the lines. I have to say, right, stand by, Every, everything's fine, okay. Now, Jeremy and action. So I came up with a carbonite in the carbon freezing chamber with Han Solo, and I turned to him and said, put Captain Cargo in the solo. <laughs> <laughs> I could not believe, how can you have so few lines and still muck it up? <laughs> and I've got a helmet on to protect, they can't look at me and blame me as well. <laughs> but it was absolutely true, put Captain Cargo in the solo hole. But luckily, as soon as that finished, they said, right, cut, that's it, thank you, Jeremy, we'll move on. I thought, well, they haven't said, They've, help. Uh, so aren't we going to do that again? No, that's fine. 
because I, what I didn't realise is they do the voice much later, uh, probably months later, but I, I got away with that. God, they might have said, look, can we get someone who can say lines? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any other, um, you know, sort of stories like that that you're not going to find any behind-the-scenes DVD extra that you could share from your time filming the movies? Yeah, I think uh, what, what I loved about the Star Wars and joining it when it was Empire Strikes Back is beginning to know everybody. You know, a lot of friends of mine played Imperial officers. They played different characters. And, and it was fun. I mean, <clears throat> Bib Fortuna, Michael Carter, in the morning I'd be there around half past five and I'd go in I said, Michael, good morning. And it was, he said, no, just it's too early for all the hello, good evening and morning. And what was funny is that Mike Carter had this makeup which took four and a half hours every single morning. And he said, are you getting any makeup? I said, no, I just put the helmet on. That's done. <laughs> so I was lucky on a lots of things. They said, morning. So I used to get the guys a cup of coffee because they were in terrible pain. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine so. All right. Well, at this point, I think I'm going to turn it over to the audience. If you guys have a question for Mr. Bullock, there's a microphone placed on the stand over here. We moved it from the last Q&A if you were present for that one. So line up. We have about 30, 45 minutes left of this Q&A. We have plenty of time to fill. If you have a question you'd like to ask, Step right up. Don't be shy. If I can stand up here with my ugly mug and talk on a microphone, you can do it for a couple minutes. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yeah, surprised. Over there, John. <laughs> I'm surprised here in Waco. Ah, at last, someone dressed as a jockey is coming around. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that you have uh, three sons. Did they grow up liking Star Wars? And what was their reaction when they found out you were Boba Fett? Well, yeah, the guys were not sort of really into Star Wars because they didn't really hook onto it. But when, when I said, well, I'm actually this character, Boba Fett, well, do you have many lines to say? Of course, that was a sore point. Right. Um, I, yes, I have several <laughs> lines, but they were all getting a bit silly. They, they, they were proud, but when they were at school, because it was that age, they were at school, they didn't say anything to anybody at at their school because they probably would have got ribbed <laughs> both of them one was a rugby player one was a soccer player so they they were saying well um, we're good at football we're good at this and they were trying to play down but it's very difficult when people say um well what what do, what does your father say what does he mean by what what's this film empire strikes back so you had to keep talking about that and say well it's a film i finished that now i'm doing a television so you, I would move on pretty quickly because you got a lot of rib oh, for yeah. wearing that costume. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Were there ever any injuries on the set? Yeah, that's a very good question. Were many injuries all the time. You, you occasionally would, because you couldn't see out of the, the Boba Fett helmet, occasionally you'd just turn briefly and smack your arm. But you didn't want to be the sissy and say, George... My arm, I've sort of not, you know, it's hurting a bit. You just carried on. But there, there were injuries. I fell on top of Darth Vader in the carbon freezing chamber. <laughs> that, was, that was just rehearsing the scene and walking down the stairs. He went, I went as well, trod on his cloak and then jerked backwards. And, oh, Christ. and then we had the little Ugnaughts, the guys helping pick us up. And I said, go away, they'll think something's wrong. Just So there were odd bits, odd bits that, that weren't very nice. But being brave and classy, I got through it. <laughs> so were you expecting your character to get so big? No, I, I think when, you, when, when a film like Empire Strikes Back, which was the second film of the trilogy, you, you suddenly thought, this is really great fun. But you, you never know how big it's going to be and the reaction, especially to, to Boba Fett. Yeah. I mean, I was immensely surprised. Like online, like Boba Fett's huge right now. Really? Yeah, go online, Facebook, anything. <laughs> there may be some royalties you're entitled to that you might be missing out on. <laughs> yes, what, does anybody know the, 
the first name of Boba Fett? It's a good question, which might keep you guessing. <laughs> I see one person that, that's claiming he knows it. You should. Well, you then should don't say know you do. It, but you can come back and tell us. You can't, you've got no brain. Come on. You've got Google at your fingertips. <laughs> All right, go ahead. How do you feel that in The Return of the Jedi, you pretty much get killed off right at the beginning? Uh, not, you, you don't die, but you just out of the movie right at the uh, beginning. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a bit sad with the Sarlacc pit. Once Boba Fett went into the Sarlacc pit, that was, I think, the end. But I think we were all hoping that he cr scrambles out up the top and gets away with help from other bounty hunters. But uh, sadly, he went into the Sarlacc pit and he's, he's still there. As I think, apparently, what happens, he goes into the Sarlacc pit, tries to get help, and he moves up. And then... He's opened up a, a bar where they serve where they serve beer because you know he's got to do something after for a thousand years he's supposed to be there and he ends up and he's he's I, there's some strange place I can't think he's opened up a bar called Hooters <laughs> but I don't know what that is you probably do here so so it's tough being a bounty hunter. <laughs> Um, do you believe that um, we might be able to see Boba Fett in the next movie? That's, well, would you phone George Lucas and J.J. Abrahams and then ask him, will we see him in the new movies? I think you might not see him, but I think you might have, have him just floating around and maybe a, a tribute. No, this is true, I don't know, but uh, I think they might use him at a later stage, maybe his own spin-off. Possibility, but as he's I, running the bar, is that what they're saying? As he's running the bar, yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, as he's running the bar, <laughs> yes. No, but that's a very good question because we just don't know. But I think everybody's looking forward to December, and there's a big party up in Anaheim. So I, th I think something will happen. Yay. I think the film, the new film, will be good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any memorable moments from filming the movies? What was that? So any more memorable moments that you'd like to share? You're waiting for us to fall over again, aren't you? Um, <laughs> memorable m moments, I think, is seeing everybody every morning when you go in. Hi, guys, how are you? And, and it was a great, a great friendly crew, cast, everything. So it was, it was fun. M most enjoyable film I've been involved with. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, how did you find this role? Like, how did it come up to you? You know, you know. How did so, how did you come into the role? How did you come into the role? Oh, how did I come into the role? Yeah. That was my half brother was associate producer on A New Hope, and um, I remember him. I was in a play in London, theatre play, and he said, um, "You ought to get your agent onto this. It's not very big. It's a couple of days' work." I said, well, I can't, I'm in the theatre. He said, well, can't you film during the day if it happens and then go to the theatre? I said, well, they don't allow that. You... So there was this sort of battle going on, but a friendly battle with my brother saying, well, half-brother, he said, you know, you ought to just, oh, well, it's two days. So for a week, nothing happened. And then suddenly a phone call came from my agent to say, could you go down to the studios and put this out? They want to see you in this outfit. I said, oh, well, but I'm, I kept saying, but I'm in the theater. I can't, can't get out of it. He said, no, just go down there. So I did. And the amazing thing was the costume fitted as if someone had, in Savile Row, a tailor, had sewn every little piece together. It was perfect. So they said, well, can you do it? I said, well, I'll make sure I can. So I had to leave at half past four every afternoon to get to the theater, but it worked. So now I'm still here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> How do you feel about George Lucas selling Star Wars to Disney? How do you feel about George Lucas selling Star Wars to Disney? Well, he, he wasn't selling it. He was, he had worked for years, writing, sitting in, going through all the, with the first three and then the next three. And I think he just suddenly thought, it's time to just move it, on, move it along. He'd worked so hard 
and everyone supports him. And I think that, that was the main reason. He just said, oh, here we go again. Enjoyed it. He enjoyed every second. And he's, he's a very nice man. And he always used to say, morning, Jeremy. Very, very quiet and slow. A bit like Boba Fett. <laughs> quiet and slow. But he, he's, he's a nice man. And he, he should be remembered really well. And hopefully I'll, I'll see him if he's at Anaheim. What was your favorite part about being Boba Fett? I think my favorite part, and this is always true, occasionally you'd walk down the corridor. I even sometimes do it here and I say, put Captain Solo in the cargo. Oh, I got it right. Oh. <laughs> now, occasionally you do that and, and just as a friendly, you're next, you know, fun. And the kids love it. So uh, a lot of charity events I go to in London, it's quite funny doing the voice and then the kids do the voice probably better than me. So. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, hey, oh, whoops. Uh, whenever Boba Fett's voice was replaced in the uh, special edition DVDs of Star Wars, how did that make you feel? No, not, not, it doesn't make me feel bad at all because they do what, what they want to do. In the original first showing of the film, Empire Strikes Back, it's, it's not me because they dubbed that back in America and all the technical stuff is done in England, so they're not... You're not going to worry. I mean, I, I just was very proud to be part of the trilogy and the films and to be asked back again for Revenge or Return of the Jedi, then the Revenge of the Sith, playing another character. So it was very friendly. The whole thing was, Jeremy, would you like to play this scene? It's not very big. I said, yes. Lovely. And to be part of it again is, is terrific. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. If anyone else wants to take the time to ask a question, you're more than free to. Um, I happen to think of one as we were going through all of this. Um, going back to the, uh, the Doctor Who. Oh, the Doctor uh, Who, yes. yes. Who is your favorite Doctor? Now you're putting me in a line. Uh, favorite <laughs> Doctor is probably John Pertwee because I worked with him and he was fun and very giggly and silly sometimes. So, so he would be the best. Oh, look, there's a Mandalorian. Ah, there we go. It seems he's dressed for the occasion. Go ahead. Hey, I just got a quick question for you. I mean, you were fantastic in the movies. How does it feel knowing this entire organization that goes around dressing much like yourself uh, for charity and for fun? I think what's so lovely that you can put back in is that at least five or six times big events in England I've actually worn the costume a few times to raise money for the local hospital. Uh, I mean, I, I've worn the costume a few. It's just so so funny to put it on once again, and you always remember that way. Standing next to Jabba the Hutt, just standing still, doing absolutely nothing, but it makes it strong. And a lot of a lot of people have uh, been very courageous about the illness and everything. They said, "Can you so?" at least once a month I'll go and do something to raise money for charity and everything and the Mandalorians do a great job as well yourself you get involved I and that's you. that's a very good outfit ladies and gentlemen I think a round of applause it, yeah, for that it's fantastic <laughs> will you be in the cosplay contest later this afternoon yeah I'm gonna try it out okay well we'll see you there all right see you <laughs> Not as good as Boba Fett's costume, but so. <laughs> do you keep in touch with any of the cast? Yes, I do. I see, I've just seen Peter Mayhew recently, Chewbacca, and he's amazing, Peter, because he's, he gets asked to go everywhere, and he will. I mean, he's had quite bad time with his knees, but he's very brave. The big Chewy, who Boba Fett doesn't like, but I, as Jeremy, I like him a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. I'm a new father myself, and you mentioned your sons and uh, your family life. Do you have any thoughts on dealing with the issues of uh, uh, an extensive career such as yourself and your family? Sorry, I can't. Oh, uh, do you have, would you, sorry, speak a little louder. I, I had a hard time hearing it myself. How do you balance your career and your family life? That's a very good question. Um, I balance it so it's in favor of the children. We have 10 grandchildren, so that's quite a lot, but they're dotted around. And at least twice a year, we'll get to see everybody together. And in fact, we've just had a birthday party, mine. Um, 
Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to guess my age? 21. 21. 21, that's better. Carry on. Sorry. No, he's, no, he's left now. now. Now they found out I'm 50. Gosh. You had just said you, you still wear the costume to some events. Do you, do you own the costume? No, I, w I was um, given my, well, a costume for myself as a gift from the dented helmet. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, sorry. You're right here. Half time. <laughs> Is that name you're looking for, Jaster? Yeah. <laughs> now, where were we? Sorry. <laughs> so, go ahead and ask your, your question again. So the, the costume, do you own it or have a copy? No, I, that's a good question. I, I own the costume that they gave me, the dented helmet, and they've raised, again, raised money through the same thing. The costume is fantastic. I think I was a lucky guy to be able to put that on, and, and it fitted as if someone had said, we're going to sew this up together, and it's ready to go. And that's exactly what the costume was. Perfect. So, so where is the, ori is the original still in existence? The original is at Lucasfilm, uh, and they put it in a certain area so it keeps it cool so it doesn't disintegrate. But I, I've, seen, I've seen the original and it just took me back. It was just ragged and old. It's, awesome. it's in the, uh, the cargo hold at Lucasfilm is what I'm gathering from that. <laughs> Darth Vader being Luke's father was one of the biggest cinematic reveals. Was that common knowledge on the set, or did they keep that as a hidden secret from the cast? I think a lot of the cast didn't know. Oh, I, wow. di I didn't know till later, but I think some people knew, but they don't b bother to say anything. They're just more worried about learning their lines and getting them right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite Star Wars movie and why? Uh, the Empire Strikes Back. I think that's my favorite. And why? Well, because I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, if uh, Boba Fett fought Darth Vader, who do you think would have won? Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no contest. <laughs> but thanks for walking half a mile to say that. <laughs> uh, if I can ask you another question. Uh, as an actor, I'm sure you have many other things that you do. Do you find yourself needing to keep up with the lore of Boba Fett or the canon of his story so you can interact with fans? Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of... Actually, one of my sons occasionally says, oh, I've been given these stories about Boba Fett and things, and what do you think of it? So he occasionally sort of keeps me up to it, but you, you actually have hardly any time... To, to keep up on it. Occasionally, have you seen the latest story they've done? And I say, oh no, I haven't, let's have a quick look. Uh, but you, you just don't get the chance to do it. Quietly, sitting in a hotel here, yes you can, but other than that, there's no, no time. Oh, and can you explain who the uh, Dented Helmet people are? Oh, the Dented Helmet is a group of people who make the dented, well, they make the, the costumes for Boba Fett and all the different characters. Br absolutely brilliant. I mean, the, the colour has to be absolutely perfect on a Boba Fett helmet. Just the little streaks and the cuts and dents is beautifully done. So if you look up the dented helmet, you, you will see what they do. Have you seen the new Doctor Who series? And if so, who's your favorite Doctor? That's a good question. No, I haven't seen much. My, my favorite Doctor is Sylvester McCoy. Well, not new, but he's a very funny man. He's good. Uh, John Pertwee, William Hartnell when he was uh, still alive. Um, but there's some very good Doctor. The new Doctor is terrific. And I think, I think you've got a lot to come out of him. He's very different from the last Oh, it's complete, well, completely different, different. yeah. Mm -hmm. David Tarrant, you know, all different. They're all, I think they've all been terrific. And I can't wait to be called to play the part of the Doctor. 
<laughs> um, in your opinion, who do you think was a better bounty hunter, Jango Fett or Boba Fett? Who was a better bounty hunter, Boba Fett or Jango Fett? Boba Fett. <laughs> How dare you ask that question? <laughs> Gracious me. Well, that was a long walk for nothing, I think. So. <laughs> Knowing the history between Han Solo and Boba Fett, how do you feel about them teaming up later in the expanded universe to work together? So I have a constant. Knowing the history between yeah. Han Solo and Boba Fett, how do you feel about uh, them teaming up in the in the future in the expanded uh, history? Yeah, I mean, I always believe that Boba Fett and Han Solo have a past. Uh, they were probably friends. They flew the Millennium Falcon, Slave 1, 2, 3. They would have probably been they were on edge, but both brilliant at what they do. And you can always see it in the, the when they're in the tip, before I go in the Sarlacc pit. It's when Han Solo says, Boba Fett, says, where? There must be something to do. Something's going on. So they, they fought together very good at what they do, but you don't know any more than that. But sh I hope they'd see that. That would be quite good to yeah, see. At least an understood meeting mutual up. respect yeah. between the two, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think mu mutual respect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Who is your childhood idol? Uh, who is your childhood idol? Childhood idol would be... Um, there's so many. Um, I think it possibly would be someone like Humphrey Bogart. I remember watching the film, the way he was doing the voices and all the, you know, you'd learn and, and sort of act out a scene. Yeah, Humph Humphrey Bogart. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. While on set, did you have much time to work with like Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford? And what was that like if you yeah. did? Well, funny enough, I saw Mark Hamill a lot and Carrie Fisher. And she said, hi, honey, how are you? And we're all in England. And uh, so we were chatting away. But I never got to say hello to Harrison Ford, even to this day, because the carbon freezing chamber scene, he goes down and I'm with a mask on and looking down as he goes. And then... They cut that scene, they moved on to another, but I w was in no other scene with him, which is a shame, but I hope, you know, because he's a brave, I mean, that plane crash that he did, but he's stepped out of that. He's, he is Mr. Strongman. He really is. And, Certainly uh, is. So I, it's a shame I never got to see him, but hopefully I will soon. Thanks. First of all, thank you for coming down all the way here to be with us today. Best thank you pleasure. for that. Um, but my question is a little something outside of Star Wars. We're all here because we love your role. But I'd like to know, what films or characters would you like us to go look at to see your diversity in your acting career? Because you're more than just Boba Fett. Well, there, there's, I mean, you can always look on things that, that I've been in, but probably mostly English. But I did a, a play, a theater play, Dangerous Obsession, with three of us on stage. And it was a very difficult see, well, a difficult play to act but one night, I'll, I'll never forget this, and you can never forget it, the audience came in, the curtain rises up, and we start the play, and it was a, this ice-cold thriller where my wife is at home, and there's a knock at the door, the French door, and, yeah, what is it, what is it, she says, oh, just come in, I just want to see your husband, and the door opens, he lets, lets him in, and then there's this tension two and a half hour play, three of us on stage. And the curtain came down right at the end of the play and there was this round of applause which was delayed. And then I remember turning around, I said, we, we reached perfection. And she said, I thought that as well. And then Dinsdale said, yeah, I think we did. You never do, but we were so close to reaching the perfect, Everything worked. Everything was in the music, just right at the last moment, just a little, was perfect. Then you go home, and I remember going home to my wife, and I said, quick, I need a beer, I need a 
gin, I need something. She said, what's the matter? I said, I'm per perfect. I'm per perfection. <laughs> I mean, we, were, we were wrong, and it was a strange, strange feeling, but we did almost reach the height of your ability. And you just wish every casting director was there watching at the same time. <laughs> but it was great. It was a good, good question. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank, thanks for coming to Texas. I, I have Pleasure. a request. Um, if you haven't already, could you say the line, he's no good to me dead? He's no good to me dead. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to ask, what is your most memorable uh, moments from your theatrical career and the plays that you've done? M most, memory. most memorable moments from your theatrical career. Oh, theatrical. I think doing different plays from... Hamlet, Richard II, uh, I think you come out of the theatre and you should be bouncing along because invariably it works very well. The cast make the thing go well. Uh, I think... Shoes. <laughs> Have we finished rattling the shoes? It's okay. Don't worry, there's no problem. It's, I do that all the time. Oh, no, the shoes will be doing a Q&A tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you say word. No, I think everything you're involved with is, is top. You know, I think, I think everybody... In fact, anybody here can be an actor. Could you, could you come up the stairs? Yeah, just a second. I'm just going to... This will be interesting. Let's do this. Right. What I'd like you to say, just gentle movement is to walk out and you can just see someone here to be or not to be that is the question whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune <laughs> right if you want if you want to be an actor you've got to take those lines in immediately i'm, I'm not going to be an actor no, then. <laughs> well this this way To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of, and I forgot the rest. <laughs> well, that wasn't bad. That, that actually wasn't bad, but it's, you went into the mode where people just want to get rid of the lines. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble in their mind to suffer. <laughs> I forgot the whole thing. As but I that's saying. no, but you did very well, and you, you need that steam to, to go and you sometimes you learn and speak very quickly and that, and that works well very good thank, thank you. you you haven't got the part but you, it's a good try <laughs> <laughs> what's more right, we'll have one more can we have a young lady up here on the stage we're going to do this is there any, is there any brief any, any any more volunteers oh come on at, at least mr hamlet had a go <laughs> Ah, uh, yep. Ah, uh, there is. Yes. No? There's a brave soul. Thank you for donating your time. We're sorry this position does not pay much. <laughs> Actually, I've changed my mind. I don't think we need to have you up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. All right no. So... How about making up? You can actually make this up. You can say, oh, t just talk to me in conversation and see where we get. You can say, oh, hello, I see the ceiling's been done again. Just natural dialogue that, that works, okay? So I can be here just fiddling around with something and then you can have the microphone for this. Hello. And just make up the conversation. Um. It, it's a, it's a well-known thing that rehearsing, you make up the conversation, oh, for goodness sake, don't do that, you know. Whatever you do, and I'll follow your lines and, and answer. So how about them Yankees? <laughs> Are you talking about football again? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, why waste my time? I'm filming Star Wars over here, and I've got no time to talk about Yankees. You should always have time to just, you know, relax. I should always have time, and I'm supposed to be here listening to you that, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> well, if you're going to cry, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I mean, I want to be here. 
Thank good. you very much. It's very good. Thank you. you. You've got the part. <laughs> Do you think the sets were impressive? Oh, sorry. I thought it was her coming down the stairs. You did. Sorry. <laughs> One more time. Do you think the sets were impressive? I think the sets were terrific. The, um, the big Jabba the Hutt throne room was huge, massive sets, but beautifully done. You felt as though you were actually there. It was really good. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any more questions? We have, you still have about five minutes left in this, this Q&A, so don't be shy. Step right up. Don't be shy. No. Okay. Um, so what did you think when you saw Carrie Fisher in that bikini uh, robe thing? The, the that she Carrie was in? Fisher in the slave outfit in, in Jabba's palace. Carrie Fisher in the slave I don't think I ever saw that. So. Sl Leia. Oh, Princess Leia, yes. Now, that used to be, we had to have an early lunch, I remember, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, we had to because the changing the set around and things like that. But um, she, she looked great in that. And good, quest, good question. Very You'll good question. Probably, probably be arrested. But <laughs> oh, only the best questions at HotCon. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. Um, thank you again for coming. I, I, I know we all appreciate it very much. <laughs> um, question is, what do you think of the, um, the, uh, the young kid that played you in the prequel? Oh, what young Daniel. Think? Yes, sir. He's a good, I call him a kid. He's in his 20s now, but he's, he's a good lad. And uh, although we're, we're, we're different in lots of ways, we, we, we'd get here and have a beer together and sort of join up and say, well, what's happening with you? He, he lives in America now. Uh, used to live in New Zealand. But he's, he's a nice guy. And I shall see him in about three weeks' time at the Anaheim. Yes, yeah. We're, we're going to that too, so... Are we going to? to well, make sure you're banned. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the okay. answer. Yes, sir. Because apparently they're not allowing beards or moustaches into the building. Well, I'll shave it off then. Okay, well, fair <laughs> enough. We'll, we'll see you there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you asked the question about uh, what Boba Fett's original name was. I think I have the answer. All right, hit us. Jester Morell. Chester Morell? Yes. Is that, is that Boba Fett's name or is it your name? No, I think it's his original name. What is my name? Boba Fett. No, before, like in this. Oh, before Boba Fett. Yes. Now this is different. This is a difficult one, isn't it? Is what was your name before Boba? Well, I'm going to stick to Boba Fett. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> it's a good try. Good try. <laughs> were you glad when you were chosen to be Boba Fett? Were you glad when you were chosen to be Boba Fett? Oh, I think I was really looking forward to something that I didn't know about, but I was very pleased to be part of, part of the Star Wars trilogy. And it means that I can come down here and chat to people. And so, I, again, really pleased to be Boba Fett. You can be Boba Fett as well. No, you can't. He seems a little preoccupied Darth being Vader. Batman. <laughs> all right, do we have any more questions for Mr. Bollock? Anyone at all? One last question. All right, and then we'll, we'll have to go from there. <laughs> Meanwhile. Uh, I'm good. Hey, once again, thanks for being here. Um, you played one of the most iconic characters, but nobody ever saw your face. So whenever people meet you in real life, is anybody ever, like, surprised or like, no, nah, that's not Boba Fett? Yeah, a lot, a lot of people say, no, you were never Boba Fett. Uh, we didn't see your face, and you didn't do this. It, you're, you're not Boba Fett. I said, well, I'm one of about eight because there are different people who don the costume to do a quick scene or if I was in the theatre, they'd have to run through the scene with them. So there's... Boba Fett's a, a cool character and you don't want to lose it. You don't want to suddenly say, I'm not interested in doing any more bits with Boba Fett. No, I would carry on. And just, it would be nice to walk around just being Boba Fett, just, just for a little bit. All right, thank you. Let's hear it one more time with a giant round of applause, Mr. Boba Fett. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming yeah. to Waco. Pleasure. Thanks. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot.
All right, everyone, stick Before around. you leave, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to do the Hamlet, the seven and a half hour production. <laughs> so it will take seven and a half hours. So here we go. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether tis noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Oh, forget the rest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeremy Bullock, everyone. One more big round of applause. Thank you so much. Don't forget to stop by his table, get a picture, get an autograph. A big thank you to our sponsors over at Banks and Comics and, of course, KWTX, your local CW and CBS station. Check us out on Twitter at The Hot Con. Stick around. We have plenty more Q&As coming up.